We're going to be looking at the SPY, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, and everything in between. Now, traders, as we're looking at this market, what we're looking for, right, coming into today, the push above the 200 SMA, which we mentioned yesterday. If we got above that 200 SMA and mounted, we did anticipate a push to 429 to 430 on the S&P. You know, this is pretty important to see where we're at and how we're moving now. We also gapped right above that pretty big liquidity level that we had here mentioned from Chart Prime as well. So we're coming right into this overall area. Now, there's a lot of things we have to talk about specifically on the day as far as NQ as well. But NQ, again, coming into that 15,000 level we talked about yesterday also, trying to mount previous highs here going back to October 24th. So again, we have a lot to discuss, but ultimately there's some big trades that are setting up almost perfectly that we're very excited to discuss. But before we jump to anything, I do want to say right now, you need to start focusing on having a plan. Now, I'm seeing a lot of comments down below. And I want to say one thing before we jump into equities, you talk about Apple, Tesla, whatever else is at play here, right? Understand how equities move, right? Depends on what's happening with futures. If you don't have a plan regarding SPY, QQQ, NASDAQ, S&P 500, whatever you're watching, you need to understand how those are moving because that's going to carry the weight of the market. And some of you guys might, might have been here for a while and you already understand that gist of it. But some of you are kind of just blindly chasing stocks without understanding the health of the economy. So we need to attack one thing before we even get to those specific subjects just yet. Before we do that, to ask you to do two things, consider liking, subscribing, helps out tons. Not gonna take too much time here either, but again, helps with the channel tremendously. Also, the Discord link is down below if you are interested. We will be locking that up after Friday. I believe there's eight and nine spots available on the two tiers. And again, those are the only one spots that will be available until Black Friday comes. So again, we're looking here at DXY. This has been one of the biggest things. So DXY, the dollar, what's happening here and what's happening with yields, okay? So if we look over the past, this is the daily chart. So really going back to early September, late September, you've been in this range of basically 105.8 to 107.2. And yesterday we kind of touched the top of the range and today we touched the bottom. Now, if you aren't following on Twitter, okay, I, I recommend you do so. So you're always staying up to date. 8.03 a.m., dollar and yields getting destroyed, more fuel for a bull case, okay? The dollar. Now, where did we come down to here? And I don't love using small time frames, but you have to in order to see where we're at. Okay, so 8 o'clock, 8.30, we touched the bottom of this range and we're bouncing off of it. Now, what I am looking for is do we continue to put in lower highs here, right? Do we continue this overall trend to push down? Because this continues, you will push down. We also mentioned what Gunlock said yesterday, right? What's happening with yields? Because ultimately, yields are what's fueling this dollar push here, right? So if we look at what's happening with yields, he called, right, for the bottom of the bond market, right? And he's been pretty on the money. I don't want to blindly follow anyone. Don't blindly follow me. But he's been one of the best, I would say, analysts when it comes to that side of the market. We look at the two-year yield, right? And let's go to the daily. I strongly recommend focusing on higher time frames here when you're looking at yields and the dollar, okay? The daily. And what's happening here on the two-year? You broke below our key level here, mentioned by Chart Prime right here, coming right into it, rejected, or you fell through, and you're testing it right now. The five-year, a lot weaker. Now, what I'm looking here across the board is can we break back below last October highs, okay? It's worth mentioning we also did top out in October of 2022. Okay, so the five-year, we want to break below that line. The 10-year, we have a lot more ways to go, but you want to get back below those October highs there as well. The 30 year, even more room to go. So you, you have to see this, right? We we aren't at that level of confirmation just yet, but we're seeing things start to align with the viewpoint here, okay? So that's what you want to see. And in order for this to go well, in order for, in my opinion, bulls to really take control, I think you got to get below these massive levels, okay? Because this is what's going to depend and really start to at least pull down some of what's happening with yields and you know start to at least get their bond market to recover now i understand the bond market might be a little bit confusing for some of you but ultimately this is one of the major things that the fed even mentioned at the fed meeting they said and they added to the fed statement right financial hardships and then fat powell went on a tangent explaining how yields are helping them do their job where they don't have to raise rates. So the question could be asked, is it good, is it bad for the economy? Um, ultimately, it's going to cause more constraint. When yields are higher, it's harder to borrow money. It's it's what's causing what's happening to the mortgage market, being at over 8% right now. 
It's all happening. We saw mortgage rates rise and start to spike once we had the breakout on yields. So again, that's the direct impact that it's having, just so you know. But I wanna jump into something else that happened today with Apple earnings and ultimately moving into next week. So a few things, so Apple reported earnings and they really never give guidance. So they're not gonna give forward looking statements or anything along those lines. And some of you are saying, well, well Tyler, well, why not? Well, Apple, I, they're better than that. I, I honestly, I, I couldn't tell you why. So Apple, they did beat on EPS and they beat on Q4. Now, what you're really looking at what's happening here is what's driving us. We knew services would carry and services are what helped beat on revenue, but revenue is still declining. That's what you have to understand there. Now, they're also going to get, they, they might, I can't tell you for sure. And we don't know just yet because the price is still kind of coming down here, but we really want to know what's happening with iPhone sales and what's happening with future Mac sales and kind of giving an outlook there. They're pretty like give or take with what they give us information wise. Uh, but right now you're only down at 175.9. So again, like I said yesterday, um, I'm on a little bit of a little bit of a tear right now. I, I anticipated a less bullish reaction from the Fed, number one. And then I also anticipated Apple to really shoot down. But the thing with Apple is now you're above major, major supports. When we were calling for that downside, we were below the 200 SMA and 171, right? And we were below the other massive level we've been talking about right here, the 174 level. We've been trading 174 on and off for almost two, three months now. Every time you get below this, it's weak. It's weak, right? But when you remount this, it's, you know, we went long back here. If you went long above 174 here, congratulations. You probably printed it today. But those are things you have to be looking for. So the question here with Apple, no matter what happens here with earnings, is can you hold 174? And if you hold 174, it's still good. Like it's just the reality of the situation. I don't think fundamentally they're strong right now. I'm gonna tell you, I think there's a lot better companies, and we're gonna go into detail what and why and what I'm looking at there, right? But what you're looking at now is probably some downside into the to this 174 level. If it breaks, you will test the 200 SMA. I'm very positive of that. But as of right now, with the strength of the market, I would have to anticipate you try to hold this, right? Even with, unless they come out and just say terrible things, right? You know, last earnings was as bad as it could have been. So, you know, we're looking at it now. And it's so far, they haven't said much that warrants major downside. If they continue to say the things about the iPhone and overall sales in China, you will break down below. If they don't say that news, you will hold this 174 line. Now, also, too, it's worth mentioning so far, the market's holding up despite Apple's earnings. Now, I said yesterday, because of how bullish you were, and you weren't even above the 200 SMA yet, but the fact that you're even here at 430 now, you know, these are things we have to consider. I don't believe Apple is gonna be the standalone that can pull the entire market back. I just don't think so, okay? There is a gap, I see it, I acknowledge it, yes, I see it. But that being said, I don't know if Apple's gonna warrant the breakdown here, because everything else across the board is beating. Apple's like the one dark horse here, right? So these are things we have to consider. Also, we go into IWM, which has been one of the best metrics of risk on versus risk off, right? And when you see IWM, you are trying to reclaim 170. IWM reclaims 170 and you're back in business. And if I give you a visual here, you go to the daily and you can see, basically it's lying like right here. This has been where we've been balancing all year. We've had a few traps on some shorts down here. We have that trap down here where you broke 2022 lows, right? Almost got us, right? If you get back above 170, high possibility we're back in 176, 177, quickly at that. And then you're looking for the 200 SMA, but we're just not there yet. Now, the biggest thing that I'm watching as far as indexes before we go into any equities is the NASDAQ. NASDAQ tomorrow is going to be very key and really over the next few days and weeks, right? So the NASDAQ, the ultimate level we've been looking to see, can we test? Can we mount? Can we get to this level, right? Is right about here. Can we get above? 15.4 and can we mount this level? That is like all I care about here. I need to see it, that's what we wanna see and ultimately that's gonna depict if we can retain this bullish movement, right? Until then, this is like the top of the line for any type of upside, pushing back into this range, right? So you're kind of restricted at this 400 point upside, which is still nice and you still can make money on that opportunity. But if you get above this, let me show you what you're looking at. At that time, in my opinion, then you come to the point of, possibly breaking structure and breaking trend, right? Getting that clear cut breakout of the overall structure, which again would line up. Now, again, you would break that at 15.2, but I wanna see a clear cut 
break of that major level, which is again, pointing out here on chart prime as well, right? These are all levels lining up. Now, if you're new and you're wondering about chart prime and what's happening here, chart prime is something that we partner with and they give you indicators on trading view, right? It's a straight plugin, but they give you access to all of our custom indicators as well. And we're now working on a new one to give you even better levels also. So by Black Friday, we should have it. It's going to be our VRVP, which is going to show you supply and demand levels, almost drawing them for you immediately also showing you illiquid area. So you're going to get our custom volume indicator down here and the chart prime indicator, the market dynamics pro, which shows you all the major levels. And it can also do the charting and, you know, showing you all your channels as well. But again, right, that link is down below if you are interested. So that's what we're looking at here on the NASDAQ, right? But you guys are probably more interested in equities. You're like, what do we trade, Tyler? I'm, I'm tired of this mumbo jumbo. Okay. Number one, I want to jump into something like Tesla. Now, Tesla, let's talk about Tesla and where you're at and how you're moving. So we mentioned yesterday, very specifically pushing into this major level, right? We wanted to get above 207, above 207. We said highly likely pushing to 218. We had the 212 region here. Also, you came to 212 back into it, mounted, pushing that level today. Now I do want to discuss a little bit about this, but when, what were the options we were looking at here? right here tesla we were looking at these tesla options that we mentioned yesterday okay this is very important to mention right so we're going to go here go to tesla trade tesla i'm going to show you just so you guys can't say i'm tweaking anything manipulating anything that's also all posted on twitter so make sure you check that out as well uh but as you can see here we were looking for the tesla uh i believe december 15th the 215s and those were about a thousand dollars yesterday and so you look at what happened today continue right they were got to highs of, I believe like 1700, right? Uh, we also posted those again. They were all on Twitter so everyone could see, but that's where they moved. So they almost went up almost 50 to 60% just on the day, right? We also showed you some other safe positions you could have taken. This is options. They the proud sponsor of our channel as well, but let me just go a little bit into detail of what we're looking at here. Now, I never like to just throw at equities because if I mentioned a trade or I mentioned an idea, people just take it and they run with it. They don't really listen and they don't really look for the resistance, the key levels and ultimately how you're going to make money on that position, right? So when we're looking at something like Tesla, I never see a very common theme here, right? The common denominator between everything that we're going to mention here on the channel lately, right? Is everything's coming into major, major points and major levels. I'm going to mention Netflix. I'm going to mention Microsoft. I'm going to mention maybe even Meta, right? And especially Tesla, because this is so big right now. And I think Tesla might be the best Tesla or Nvidia might be the best upside opportunity over the next few days based on shorts that have been stacking into these positions. And this is why we weren't going short at those lows. Why at the 200 MA? Because shorts were getting very heavy and aggressive there. And we do know what, when you push down a lot, when you get these major, major pushes to the downside and you get to key levels, guess what? It doesn't take much for shorts to have to start covering. We've talked about it a lot here on the channel and we've tried to protect ourselves against that, right? So whenever you're pushing out or getting a really, you know, overbought, oversold move, it's time to, you know, hit the caution button. And that's kind of where we were at, right? So even though we were necessarily wrong in the idea of getting more continued downside, what were we protected from? We were protected from overly shorting. We were protected because we knew the 200 SME on the NASDAQ was there. We knew the SPY was getting back to its 200 MA, right? And we knew coming into today, man, the upside's looking probable based on the dollar getting that downside and yields also getting that downside. So again, that's why I always try to hammer home to you guys. Have a plan, right? So just when we mention these equities, don't just listen. Oh, well, Tyler said go long if this happens, right? Understand why. Try to find the place for yourself so you're not relying here just on me or any channel in general. Because ultimately, when you come to any channel, you should be questioning everything, right? So the guys that do question me down below, I encourage it. I encourage it. I love having educated dialogue back and forth right now. And if you're just here to troll, then I, I don't know what to say. But that's ultimately the goal of the channel is hopefully so you don't need us at the end of the day. And this is more of just entertainment at the end of the line and maybe even just spit in some trade ideas back and forth. And ultimately, you guys provide a lot of good trade ideas to the channel as well. OK, so going into tomorrow, going into next week, everything, right? We're going to be talking about some major key levels. Now, Tesla, I'm telling you right now, we're going to go to the two hours so you can see. If you get above the 200 daily, you're cooking, you're pushing, you're cooking. It's going to be awesome. I'm telling you right now, it's just hold above the 200 on the daily. You're awesome. You're going to be moving great. Now, giving you a, for instance, and something that we talked about and that I've been hammering home here in discord, right? So this morning, I want to give you a visual right here. Let me just throw it over here so you can see this morning. The only stocks I even mentioned were Tesla breaking above the weekly. Now it needs to claim 218 over the daily and over 218. I do believe Tesla may be the best setup that there is Netflix. Mounting 200 weekly, right? 
also what we're looking for right here, the 200 weekly 417.8. We're going to go to that here in a second as well, right? I had a plan. This is all I was interested in. I didn't mention anything else. That was it, right? We had a target for NASDAQ. Everything this morning all mentioned out. What happened? You came back into the 200, bounced almost $7 of upside instantly. Tesla, similar story. Pretty fantastic. Pretty amazing. Spy, follow the plan to the T. So we go in here and we look and Tesla ends the day here now. Now, if you wanted to scalp, you had that opportunity, like I mentioned yesterday in the video. You, you had all those opportunities. Char Prime even highlighted too. You know, you had a massive support here since you broke and gapped above that, right? So when we look at this, I want you to understand what we were looking at. Once you get over 212, that also midline support, you pushed into that very easy, very simple trade. Going into Netflix, a level that I keep talking about here on the channel, the 200 weekly moving average, right? The weekly with the changes from the daily to the weekly. As you see here, look at this line. Look at, look at that respect from this morning. I wish I'm going to go to the 15 minutes so you can see. So what happens? Early morning, we break up. We come back down into it and you start and you get that continuation to the upside up to that level of 426. And ultimately, I think this thing's going to hit 435, possibly 445. So those are areas that I'm looking at right now for potential upside. Okay. So Netflix, still a really strong name as long as it's above 417, 418. If you get that pullback, it's really awesome. If I'm looking to go long now and I haven't gotten into anything, I'm looking for a break of local highs and then push into 435. That's the next level there. Okay. I'm going to go over some trade ideas here on Options AI as well, but I hope you guys understand and are following. Next up, NVIDIA, also a major fan here. And I think you got some of the confirmation you were looking for here on the day. So NVIDIA in particular, let me just show you very quickly what we're looking at. So what we were watching for right here, like on the, you know, the four hour daily, whatever, right? You were making lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, pushing down. Well, you broke structure. You broke highs here. You look decent. So going into tomorrow, I'm going to tell you right now, if we can get that amount of this level right about here, around 437, in my opinion, we're going to get that push. And I mean, you have a nice gap up here as well, like almost a 450, 449. Okay. NVIDIA shorts are heavily in this thing. And I'm telling you right down here, a lot of shorts got put in here. You can also look at volume what's taking place down here is volume started to stack up when we were at lows, which is another sign of a reversal. So these are things that you have to be paying attention to. So NVIDIA as well. Don't get over optimistic. They still have earnings coming up in the next two, three weeks, but still very nice name would be watching them. Meta as well. So Meta is one of those easier charts in my opinion. I think it's been extremely easy. I think it's something that we just very simple simple to watch here. So in my opinion here on Meta, I'm going to make it very clear, very easy to understand. You have like a few levels here just to give you a visual. Let me show you here, right? This little got deleted. Okay. So really this is like a midpoint. I'm not super interested, but you got to watch it as well. Holding over 310, I'm very bullish here. Okay. Below 310, 304 is where you're looking. Okay. So let me just draw this out for you, right? So if I'm looking at Meta, right? If you get back below this level, looking for a break and a push down, right? Down towards 306, 304. Ideally, what you would like to see coming into the morning with any type of bullish behavior is a push down and then a bounce up, hopefully to 312 for the short term, and then possibly getting a breakthrough mount and pushing up into that 320 range. 320 is a major, major level here, right? Very major. If you don't remember when we were trading it back here, when we pushed up to 330 here on the channel, we were watching all of this right here. Once we mounted, it was all signs go. It was very nice. And you also had that retest back here to 312, 313, or 313 as well. So again, liking meta, liking what's playing out there. Okay, I'm not going to go over too many ideas, but those are things that I'm liking right now. I have more stuff on Twitter, so if you can check us out there. Now also here, just so you understand with Apple, you're going short, whatever. This is why I always say playing earnings is very risky. Very, very risky. Very rarely will I ever signal anything for earnings. I didn't trade Apple earnings. I was interested, but I just, after the upside today, it just, I couldn't do it, right? Apple's move, expected move is 3.4%. So even if you went short or went long on Apple, right now, oh, well, there you go. Now Apple's getting crushed. The, they must have started commenting here, but you got to hold above the, two, man, you break below 200, it's going to get ugly. Now you're, you're just now making money. So basically to make money here on Apple, you got to close below 171 to make money. And then to the upside, you got to give almost like 182. So giving you a visual, like the risk here is so high unless you're very dated on a position. So again, those are things that I'm looking for. Those are things that I'm watching, right? And that's why I always say, be careful here. Again, Tesla, favorite thing I'm liking, 215. I like contracts that are close to in the money, a little bit out of the money. 
and I like Tesla for the data time. That's what I'm watching there. Okay, that's what I'm going to be watching. That's what I'd be you know, looking forward to the team going into. I'm not going to look at Nvidia. I don't want to even get pe people. You guys are going to start going ultra risky on me, and I'm not about that. Um, and I will be taking the blame for all of it. So I'm not going to do that one. As far as options go on uh, Meta, right? So I'm looking at Meta. Now you can go a few routes here. Okay, a few routes. And I've been showing some more short form content here on Instagram. And I'm going to start doing it here on TikTok as well. I still like December though. You can go shorter dated, right? If you want to, you can do all that. Someone took my Tesla trade yesterday and today. I think it was Jameis again. I posted on Twitter. Dude went crazy on those contracts. So you can I, you still tinker from here. But again, so we're going to go to December 15th. Okay. Now it's going to show you multiple trade ideas, which you can do. Now, personally, I like debit call spreads and calls personally, just because the overall, you know, R value of what I'm looking at here. Okay. But again, I'm still going to tell you right now, you know, they're kind of they're a little bit expensive, right? But again, for me, as I, I like to give you guys trades that I would be taking, right? I, I can't speak on trades that I personally wouldn't take. Okay. So that's what I'm still liking, right? Three tens, give or take, right? Something just at the money. You could even go maybe, maybe just maybe go something closer to like three fifteens if you want, right? But I just want you to understand that's what we're looking at. And I think it's highly possible. Again, going back to that meta chart. So you understand, right? We go to meta. I mean, You've seen very volatile days here. Meta is a very volatile name. The stops here would also be very tight. If you get under the 310 level, I mean, it's a stop. You break local lows at 308, stop out. The upside potential, 318, and then into 320 plus. Very nice. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm trading. If you have questions, comment down below. The Discord link will be expiring again. It will not be here after or will just be full come uh, after Sunday or maybe even before that the spots sell out. Like, subscribe, do what you got to do. Have a good one, guys.